our second speaker. Woodrow Samuel II is hoping to bring some clarity for all fa uh, baseball fans and non I'm sorry, basketball fans and non-basketball fans alike tonight by addressing a hotly debated topic concerning three of the greatest basketball players to ever play the game. Woodrow can speak as an authority on this topic, being a former high school and college basketball player, as well as a coach of the sport now for over 23 years. Although his trek into basketball was an interesting one because he was only recruited to play the game due to a seven inch growth spur between his freshman and sophomore year of high school. Ever since the sum that summer long ago, however, it has been a part of the game in one capacity or another. Tonight, he trusts that his expertise will shed some light on this contested topic. This will be Woodrow's second speech in the evaluation and feedback section of the visionary communication educational pathway that he is on in his Toastmaster journey. The title of Woodrow's speech tonight will be The Heir Apparent. Woodrow, come on up. So I start with a story that's a little bit unrelated, and by the way, good evening fellow Toastmasters, and I believe we are without guests this evening, so just good evening to our fellow Toastmasters. I start with a story that has to do with the overall topic, not so much the end result that I'm hoping to give you, but that is a true story. I had a growth spurt in between my freshman and sophomore year, seven inches. It happened in less than two months. I was in so much pain that my mother kept me at the doctor's office weekly and there wasn't anything that she could do for me other than give me pain medication. So growing pains are a real thing. I just want to put that out there. People say that and I don't know if they really know what they're saying, but it's a real thing. My bones were extending at such a, a, a fast rate that I was literally it hurt to walk. But seven inches later, I, I gained a spot on the basketball team. So here tonight, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what is a really hotly debated topic in the sport of basketball. And it has to do with this fellow right here. So I'm going to ask you if you would please put your hand in the air if you know who this fellow is behind me on the screen. Okay. Okay. So this is the very famous, often deemed the greatest player of all time, Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Michael Jordan has been given that title based on all of his accomplishments and the things that he's done as a player in the league. He was so good that he even took a two-year hiatus and he tried to play my original first love, which was baseball, which, let's just say he, he did the world a favor when he went back to basketball. <laughs> he did us all a favor when he did that. I, I don't judge him for it. It was a time in his life his father had just been murdered and he was just going through some things and he probably needed to get away from it. But baseball was not his thing. He has been deemed the greatest. Now, as a student of the game, I can't argue with that. I grew up during the Michael Jordan era and I will tell you that bar none, I think he is the greatest of all time. And that includes all of the greats. That includes Will Chamberlain. That includes Oscar Robertson and all the other guys you can think of from the different eras. Here is the dilemma that I want to address tonight. The dilemma is we have an heir apparent to Michael Jordan. And that heir apparent is... And I, I put this quote up, by the way, just to give you a little insight into Michael Jordan. I know you've seen this quote. Everyone has seen this quote a million times, I know. But I put it up just to give you an insight into the man where I think part of the drive for him and his greatness went so deep that I think he's the type of person. You ever meet people that regardless of whatever they did, they probably would have been one of the best at it. Mm -hmm. I believe that he's just that type of person. Just in all that I've studied about him and all that I've read about him, if he had decided to hang wires for Tico, I believe he would have been the best wire hanger Tico had ever seen in their, in, in their entire existence. I just believe that about what I've learned about him. But what we have, as we look at these st stats here of Michael Jordan, what we have is a litany of greatness. This is his entire career, right? We have 
over a thousand games, just south of I mean, just south of eleven hundred, and he averaged thirty points for all of those games. And you see all the other stats. But now let's get into the dilemma a little bit. Here's the dilemma. He has been, there has been an heir apparent dean, right? And to me, it's a little surprising that it's this guy. Now, how many of us are familiar with this guy? Raise your hand, right? Also, phenomenal basketball player. If you do a top 10 list of all time and he's not on it, I'm going to need to see your list and see what you're thinking because I may need to help you with your list. He is, he's that good. And he's not done, by the way. He's, I think, 34. He's probably got a good three or four years left if he stays injury-free to continue adding to his stats. And that is none other than LeBron James. LeBron James has been deemed the heir apparent to Michael Jordan on many fronts. I can't argue with the fact that LeBron James is arguably the best player of his era. I'm unsure who you would put him up against to say that they're better than him in his era. Here's my concern, though. When we deem him as the heir apparent to Michael Jordan, and by the way, he has some incredible numbers. Let's make no mistake about it. These are incredible numbers, and he's not done. That's the thing. These are the numbers, and he's not done. So I take nothing away from LeBron James. LeBron James, in my mind, is the greatest player of his era. But here's my concern. We have kind of deemed him the heir apparent to Michael Jordan. And these are great numbers. We can't argue with those numbers. But I have a slight problem with him being deemed the heir apparent to Michael Jordan. And I'm going to show you what that problem is for me. And I'm going to ask you one more time. I've asked you two times. Do you know the guy on the screen? Raise your hand if you know this guy on the screen. A few, a few less hands, and that's okay. It's not, a, it's not a great picture of him. I probably could have picked a little bit better picture, but I wanted it to be a little bit obscure on purpose, just like the, the other two. You notice you couldn't see their names, and you couldn't really see their numbers real clear. That was by design. This is Kobe Bryant, ladies and gentlemen. Kobe Bryant also... One of the greatest basketball players ever. Here's what blows my mind and what I'm really trying to understand is how do we skip over him and get to LeBron James as the heir apparent? Now, they all have great numbers, right? I mean, we can talk about these numbers all day. These are phenomenal numbers. But here's my question. How do we skip over what Kobe Bryant has done and give the heir apparent status to LeBron James when you consider that Michael Jordan participated in six NBA Finals, and someone tell me how many he won. Six. Six. He was six for six. LeBron James participated in eight NBA Finals and won three. Kobe Bryant participated in seven NBA Finals and won five. How do we skip over him and give that title to LeBron James. And nothing against LeBron James. LeBron James is phenomenal. I take nothing from him. He will go down in history as one of the greatest ever. But I believe when you look at the stats, when you look at the numbers, and Jay-Z said, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. When you look at the numbers, the heir apparent is Kobe Bryant. Thank you, Toastmasters.